Hey YouTube, long with Post1975. There's a phrase I haven't heard for years, and it's your school days were the best days of your life. That may or may not be true, depending on you know your experiences at school. And this um, video is kind of inspired by a conversation I was having with a PM uh, or PMing with a friend the other day, and we kind of talked about what we were like at high school. And I gotta say, you know, school, I enjoyed it. I kind of honestly really enjoyed it. It really wasn't that bad for me, but I honestly do take some absolutely fantastic memories. And we're talking really juvenile stuff. We're talking proper nerdy little fanboy arguments and, you know, staunch defense of the system you owned and forming allegiances with other kids who had the same system with you against people who had, you know, the opposite platform. But I can honestly say that there were, you know, some of my favorite gaming moments, experiences ever, not just that of playing a game, uh, occurred to me at school. I mean, my first school, my primary school, uh, I remember going there and, I mean, I played Pong, uh, you know, this is slightly just before we got our Spectrum, I think, and my first experience was the BBC Micro B, which was obviously that initiative to get a computer into schools and the BBC sort of sponsored or promoted it, and it was an educational tool, mainly, you know, games did come out on it. and. That was my first experience. Then I got Spectrum, and then the sort of few experiences with the Spectrum is at primary school, nothing massive, because you know we're talking uh, um, sort of very early to, to mid 80s here. But I think the first time for me where like, school, you know, this other element, this sort of just brilliant, you know, like a like an exclusive club based on what you owned began of swapsies of you know talking with your mates suggesting games playing games going over other people's houses and after school experiencing different systems because even though you would trash talk a system you'd still go to after school you'd play it you'd love it you wouldn't tell them you'd just go Muh. but then you'd come home and tell your parents and say, oh my god the Atari ST is amazing I totally want one but yeah I mean properly began for me when I went to high school secondary school you know senior school depending on on where you are and it, when I first got there we still had a 128k spectrum and used to trade games with people you know used to do swapsies you used to arrange it the day before then have to have that horrible day of waiting where you were fear that they'd even remember to bring it in the next day you know and, and it was killer and then you used to trade them sometimes permanently sometimes not sometimes play record <clears throat> not that I ever did that but it was absolutely awesome. And, you know, as I said, you would form these allegiances with other people who just sit there and, and bitch talk at lunchtime, you know? It was all in good fun. I mean, you were kids, you would be slightly dickish. But that's what you did. And um kind of kid I was at school, basically. I was a nerd, I was a geek. I mean, I did my sports, didn't like rugby. I mean, come on, look at this frame. Uh, I liked football. I played um, centre back for my house, Gryffindor. Sorry. Morton, but we were pretty good. We won a free trip to Butlins one year for getting more house points than every other house. Um, hated cross country, came third in it once, cheated, basically found a hole in the hedge, me and my mate Shane, and waited and looked around to see who anyone else was coming and then took a massive shortcut where we bypassed a quarter of a mile of the track, came back up on the other side of the river, going through the woods, looked left or right, ran out after the first three people and then pegged our guts off, caught up and got, you know, third and fourth. Cheated, yeah, but damn it, I'm still going to claim it. If I ever run into any of those other people I beat, hopefully they're not watching this. But ultimately, I was a nerd. But the great thing about being a nerd was once consoles kicked in, you know, they kind of, they were the new cool. They were cooler than computers. I mean, I remember my dad looking at it and just going, it's not got a keyboard, what's the point? But when I first had my Sega Master System, they're like, four other kids in school who had it so we'd all trade games and buy games off each other or you know because games back then were still 25 to 30 quid they were properly expensive and when I wanted to upgrade to my Mega Drive I remember um, selling half my game collection to this kid called Ben and then selling my Master System and the reigning games in the paper and then getting you know well uh, a part time job I had with my dad's anyway in his garage Friday night I waited on tables Sunday I washed up I've mentioned this before to import a Mega Drive because I absolutely had to have one I couldn't wait you know to the official launch so at this point I was the only kid in school there were 700 kids in my high school I was the only kid at school I shit you not with a Japanese Mega Drive so nerd or not I was fucking cool people used to come up to me and just go are you that kid who's got that Japanese Sega that we're not even going to get yet and I went yes yes I am it's 16 bits and it's got golden axe and this phrase you always used to chuck around which is oh it's arcade perfect who wants to fucking touch me 
it, yeah, it's funny. It, it, and obviously, Me Machines, uh, CVG, reading them at lunchtime, you know, between lessons with your friends. Absolutely amazing moments. And then I remember when the Mega Drive actually came out, I moved on. I got my Japanese Super Famicom, and people come up to you, you know, and just say, like, we got Mega Drives now. And I'm like, yeah, meh. Super Famicom. And it's funny, when I had Mega Drive, one other kid in school had one, and he was this rich kid, so he'd always try and, I don't know, upstage me and impress me by buying all the games he could, but I was kind of like, that suited me, because I got to play them anyway, and it was like a Millhouse Bart moment in The Simpsons. He eventually got bored of them, and then he would just sell them to me, you know, at cut down prices. But it was awesome, because it was an exclusive club, because so few people had this system. You would trade back and forth with each other with these games that were in Japanese, and everyone else would just look at it and just go like, what does that mean? I can't read. I'm like, neither can I. Therefore, it must be fucking cool. And the same with the Super Famicom, and the same trait with the Super Famicom. You know, he he tra he trade. He he eventually get bored and flog it to me. You know, massively reduced. Oh, that kid was brilliant. You know, his, his need to show off benefited my gaming. Absolutely fantastic moments. The allegiances you form with people. You know, because this you had the same system. The fact that you would make these big staunch defences of the company whose system you had. Sega didn't care about you at the time. You know, Sega just wanted profit, but you would literally fight to the death for them, as some people would for Nintendo. It was brilliant, you know. Some of my fondest memories are always based around, you know, games at school, and not even necessarily playing them, although, you know, going home with your mates after school and playing, absolutely fantastic. And when I got Super Street Fighter 2, you know, no one else had it, and, all right, it cost me 75 quid on the Super Famicom, I was a fucking god, you know, trading games on the bus as well, when people would look up and just go again with the Japanese thing, but, but what's that, I don't know what that is, and you just be, you utterly milk the moment to try and be cool, and one of my favourite memories ever, because there was this other big rivalry at my school between Amiga owners and Atari ST owners, and this one kid just couldn't, I get his head around, or, stomach the fact that I had a Mega Drive and I just used to shove its stats down his throat like, yeah, I can, you know, it can do this many sprites and I have this many sound channels. So geeky. And his mate, Matt, he really wanted a PC Engine for Christmas that year because he used to read Beam Machines as well. And um, I remember his dad ordered him for Christmas. He told me this a few years later and he was gutted. Opened it up a few days before Christmas and just went, I'm not buying that, it's tiny because it's five inches by five inches. Shut the box, sent it back and went and bought him Amiga. Which, you know, he, he grew to love but he still was really annoyed that he didn't get to play PC Engine. And I remember it was the day after Christmas and his buddy Lee, was who was his best mate, couldn't handle the fact, as I said, that I had a Mega Drive. They both walked into um, the form room and it was Lee who came straight up to me and just went, Matt's got an Amiga. And even as a child, I was a cynical bastard. And I just looked at him and just went, Matt's got an Amiga. Not you, Matt's got an Amiga. So basically, you're bragging about your friend's Christmas present and not yours because you, you didn't get an Amiga. And I know, it makes me sound like a dick or a cop, but that's what you did back then when you were kids. But, you know, as I said, the allegiances of the trash talking, the swapping, you know, buying, selling, you know, the bus rides home, lunch breaks, is reading the machines, uh, reading CVG, Crash Magazine, you know, Sinclair user, your Sinclair, playing, you know, I rode once as a kid five miles down the road with two of my mates on a Saturday afternoon just to play their computers and then rode a back. No one does that these days. So many fond memories. So were your school days the best days of your life? Probably not but they certainly have some of the strongest and most fondest gaming memories of my life. So, you know, what are yours? What are, you, what are your fondest memories, you know, about gaming when you're at school? I'd really, really like to know. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.